HCV infected patients with cirrhosis remain at risk of HCC development even after successful HCV eradication. The end of the study was to explore the incidence and risk for HCC among lung cirrhotic patients with successful HCV eradication. A total of 642 patients with an SVR after PEC interferon plus rubberine combination therapy were enrolled with a mean median follow up period of 53 months. 33 of the 642 patients developed HCC over 2,325% years of follow up. As expected, Cast regression analysis revealed that the strongest factor predictive of HCC was liver cirrhosis, followed by older age and high gamma GT level. The incidences of HCC did not differ between patients with high and low baseline gamma GT levels among cirrhosis patients. However, the incidence of HCC was significantly higher in non cirrhotic patients who had higher gamma GT level as compared with those with low gamma GT level. Cast regression analysis revealed that the strongest factor associated with HCC in non cirrhotic sustained myelogenic responder was high baseline gamma GT level, which was defined as the level uh, more than 75 percentile of the population, uh, followed by older age. While non cirrhotic patients were stratified Based on the two risks they carried, uh, they are high gamma GT level and the old age. There exists a dose dependent fraction of HCC risk in patients who carry two or more or one risk as compared to those without any risk factor. It's noteworthy that the incidence of HCC was not different between older non cirrhotic patients with high gamma GT level and uh, patient with liver cirrhosis. The current finding provides evidence for launching closer follow-up surveillance toward non cirrhotic patients with risk characteristics in the clinical setting. We concluded that HCC remains a threat in non cirrhosis patients uh, even if they have an SVR Serum gamma GT level help to identify potential patients at high risk. There are two questions. Question 1. Of the 79 cirrhotic patients who had HCC, how many had evidence of cirrhosis at the time HCC was detected? We have carefully re-evaluated the 17 patients from medical records as shown in the supplementary table 2, seven patients were diagnosed as liver cirrhosis upon HCC occurrence. Of the seven patients, six had elevated gamma GT level at best nine. It might be due to that high gamma GT level are not only associated with liver disease severity from cross-sectional observations, but also related to liver disease progression in the longitudinal studies. The novelty of current study we believe is that we identify a novel, simple, and non-invasive biomarker for predicting HCC in the spatial population. In addition, high gamma GT level has been demonstrated to be associated with the all-cause mortalities in the United States and Taiwan and the emerging data have also reported its association not only with liver cancer, but also other malignancies. It implicated the potential oncogenic role of high gamma GT level beyond the issue of whether the development of liver cirrhosis is, uh, serves as a confounder of HCC or not. The second question is, was elevated gamma GT was due to the presence of histological feature of NASH in these 70 non cirrhotic patients. NASH cohort with few or no cases of cirrhosis had a minimal risk for HCC, and epidemiological evidence suggests that 
the association, the association between Nash and HCC is limited to those who have had cirrhosis for more than 20 years. It is true that we could not completely exclude the potential impact of concurrent NASH in HCC development in the 17 patients. In the 17 patients, among them, the longest observation period for the patients in the current study was approximately 10 years. Even if the HCV patient had concurrent NASH, it would have had a little impact on the finding of the current study. Furthermore, gamma GT was associated with HCC only among non cirrhotic patients, but not cirrhotic patients, as NASH patients did, which reinforces the role of gamma GT in HCV related HCC in the current study.